Hello, everyone. My name is Jacob Fortung. I'm the host of this podcast, Do Us Within Emerging Markets. And I, I just want to share my experience with uh, using Anchor so far. So I, when the pandemic started, I, I thought about starting a podcast. And the whole idea was to bring in some really amazing folks that are doing some great work in their respective industries within the emerging markets. And the Anchor platform really helped me get the word out there and also just make it a lot easier for me to invite the guest and, and just share the amazing um, experiences they've had and the amazing work they're doing in their respective industries within the emerging markets. So um, it's pretty fun. Um, you don't even worry about the technical part of uh, making the podcast. You actually just focus more on the content and Anchor has done it really well for me. So I will highly encourage anybody who is trying to start a podcast to uh, try to use uh, uh, just check out Anchor, and I think you won't regret it. I'm not a technical person, uh, but you know, if you listen to these episodes that I've been been publishing so far, you know, it's, it seems like you know I, I know what, uh, the technical part of it. But you know, Anchor helps you take care of the the technical part, and you just focus on the content. So uh, feel free to check it out. I highly encourage you won't uh, you won't uh, regret it. And you know, it's it's right there. You don't pay anything. So. Um, you know, in, in times like this, I think starting a podcast and getting the word out there, irrespective of what you're doing, will be a really great experience. So thank you guys for listening to my episodes. Please check out uh, Anchor and you you will have a great time. So uh, cheers, guys, and see you guys next next episode. Thanks. Um, so, uh, so please, Duncan, if you can, uh, I, I think uh, you ended on a very interesting note as, as when, when you summarized what we said last time, but if we can just continue from where we ended so that uh, people can, so can get like a flow and why we decided to pick the theme for today, I think that would be really helpful. So if you can help us just start the conversation, that would be really nice. Yeah, I, I I will try to recall everything we talked about. Um, I think uh, we we decided on uh, talking about who the players are in the entrepreneurial ecosystem in Africa. Um, I think piggy banking on the last uh, uh, point about uh, there is a lack of data, and where uh, in so far as uh, there are a lot of data points that are various institutions are collecting every day, and even though it's my, it's not properly, um, you know, reported in a format that's fine, uh, that's um, fungible or you know can easily be consumed by the relevant stakeholders. There aren't not many. Uh, structured frameworks around data reporting and the accountability aspect of it to make it available to uh, users and who really needs it. And so uh, a lot of institutions are sitting on tons of data um, and, you know, government authorities that are responsible for data points from the industries that they regulate, for example, the central banks and the financial services space and a lot of uh, uh, ministries that you know collect this data about small and medium-sized enterprises as well do not really share this data and so there isn't much and even if they do there isn't much use of that data so we arrived at the decision of you know where do we start from and who is responsible and who who are the players in the first place um, and we gave an example of the current state in the US uh, right now we say unless there's a pandemic or an emergency situation, um, most of these institutions do not come together to uh, solve, to work towards a common problem unless it serves the political uh, interest of a few people. Rarely do different uh, ecosystem actors come together to work on, on a shared problem. Uh, and we say this is a universal problem globally. And even in the US right now, you know, we know like 30 million small businesses uh, that are employing over 60 million people in the U.S. And yet financial technology providers and banks are not yet sharing data to know uh, how 
a lot of these businesses are going around keeping cash at their doors and how do they share this data to kind of improve on the credit scoring of these uh, businesses to you know expand access to finance and this we say the situation is even worse in africa because we don't even have this data and when we have it these financial technology providers uh, do not really share it with the banks and the banks don't share it with with anyone as we know um, and as I, I think that's how we arrived at who are the players and and probably we might want to share today about what we think the players the right players um, in the space are and what are the modalities that could work uh, to enable them collaborate and find solutions to some of these problems entrepreneurs face thanks thanks Duncan um, and I think uh, because we arrived that goal I just want to have people's take on just a, like a simple question who do you think is the most important stakeholder in 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 Africa in terms of if you want to start a business and I'll, I'll go as specific as say like um, let me say for example in Nigeria um, if you want to start something and I, I, I know some people have not started a business in Nigeria or, 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 or some people might not have you know uh, been exposed to entrepreneurship in, in Nigeria I'm just trying to be specific here but who do you think, just, a, just just like a guess to kind of pick up the conversation, and uh, who do you think is the most important stakeholder to start a business? And please, feel free to get it wrong. <laughs> Some of us, least at the government. Um, well, what do you think? Be, go ahead, go ahead. I, can say. I think it would be the capital. Like, um, from my experience, um, I've done some investments in Cameroon and also Nigeria. And, uh, and um, in most cases, we will talk about uh, the capital yes. first. So, uh, as can see, please just give a background about yourself and like where you grew up and stuff so people can have an idea. Okay. Uh, so, I'm from Nigeria. Uh, my whole family is from Nigeria. And uh, we immigrated to Cameroon. Uh, my mom is in business, my dad is also in business. Uh, my dad imports vehicle um, from Dubai and from China to Cameroon. And then my mom imports um, wedding products from Nigeria to Cameroon. And then they said it. So I grew up in a business environment um, and I went to school with Jacob. Uh, we went to a boarding school. And then from there, I came to Canada to do um, engineering. Um, after finishing the engineering, um, I got a job as an engineer and I had some free times in my hand to think about stuff. So I started thinking about um, um, business and I saw tremendous opportunity um, um, in Cameroon and also saw some opportunities in Nigeria. So I started reaching out to my close friends to see um, what projects they are involved with um and um so i did some investment i uh, most of them failed um because um there's lack of accountability as Don um, duncan mentioned so and there's uh, it's hard um, um like it's hard to hold people accountable for capital uh, you can invest and um, you can lose all your money and uh, you might not have the right authority to in enforce a contract, right? I know that, you know, there's a difference, uh, there's a different experience when you're investing in a particular country. Yeah. Uh, so for, for Nigeria, uh, in Nigeria, we have the big population, the mm -hmm. big population, the immediate population that uh, would consume your product. Um, so, for example, um, I think it was Liz, mm -hmm. uh, she mentioned that she's interested in the um, agro-business. So, agro-business will be something that we did in Nigeria. And um, if you add some processing to it, it will be, uh, it will be huge. Um, Dolating in Nigeria is that um, you have to be a little bit more careful. Um, you might need a lawyer in between you the investor and the entrepreneur uh, to be able to enforce whatever contract you have between you and the person that you are investing in. 
and uh, in most cases, um, you, uh, you should require like a collateral security, like something like LAN. Um, um, I find that most people like in the African continent, they use their LAN as a form of collateral security. And um, if you can find a good lawyer that's local there, that can do everything formally. So um, you would request like the land title, um, have the lawyer re review it, have like a third person appraise the line and make sure that the value of the line is like, is equivalent to whatever investment that you're putting in, right? Um, from my experience, doing that makes the entrepreneur more accountable uh, uh, to um, produce like your return on your investment. Um, in Cameroon, uh, Cameroon has a smaller population. Um, um, people are not yet as exposed um, to business compared to Nigeria. Uh, in Nigeria, um, uh, like eighty percent of um, of the economy in Nigeria is private, small private businesses. Uh, people survive there by owning a business, by buying and selling. In Cameroon, uh, it's not at that level yet, right? If you um, have, um, like, in my early days of investing in Africa, right, um, I would um, try to take as um, all the risk by by taking all the risk and just believing in the person um, or the idea. Um, but in most cases, um, it goes sideways, right? Um, I don't know if once you put in the collateral security, um, it is viewed as um, as a formal business and not just sh charity per se. Um, so I just find that um, the more formal you make the dialogue, the better uh, result you can get from it. Um, I can give you an example. Um, of it, I've um, I've invested um, like in the car business, for example. Um, so I saw an opportunity um, here in Canada. We have uh, we have a website called Kijiji. Um, I think in the U.S. is Craigslist, uh, and I saw an opportunity of um, of giving um, people the opportunity to buy cars directly from here in Canada through that Kijiji, right? Um, and I wanted to do a proof of concept by buying the car here, giving it to someone there to sell it, right? And um, at the beginning, uh, the person that I was in contact with didn't have enough capital to buy the car here or to send it through the, the ocean. So I took upon all the risk to buy the car and then went into an agreement with the person that um, sell the car, just get back to me with um, with the capital, and then we just keep on growing from here, right? Um, but uh, my experience was that once it goes there, and without having a formal contract, um, there's high chances that you will lose your money. Um, so that's my experience. Just maybe to, to follow up and, and maybe, I mean, I... Uh... I, I totally understand that it's, it's, I had similar discussions around that with European and American investors and founders too. Um, but maybe the question is how long, how, how much time have you spent to get to know your business partner, right? How much was it like a phone call or did you actually meet the person in person and did you spend several meetings and, and I don't know, like how, and, and what, or is it maybe more a cultural difference, right? Because you, I think you said something very interesting. As soon as there is a collateral, it's a formal business because otherwise it's being looked at like more ch charity. Is there maybe some kind of uh, culture in, in, in certain places in Africa where nonprofit organizations have been giving away money kind of like for free for certain people to, to work on stuff? So kind of like giving money to someone without a collateral is, is, is looked like it looks like something like that. I, I don't know. I'm just guessing here. Uh, like when I first started the uh, investment, so I went with my close friends that I went to school with, my high school friends, um, 
people that I knew, my, my relatives, right? At least I can trust them, they can trust me, right? So I went with them first. And, uh, and um, I, I realized that whether it's your relative or your high school friend, um, you, need, you need to formalize it. And the more formal you go, like the more, um, uh, if you have a lawyer, right? I, uh, at least they will view from a point of view. Uh, I've had people that uh, they would typically go to a bank, borrow money from the bank there to help with their capital. Uh, but the interest on the loan there is really, really high. So they tend to, um, they tend to call upon their friends abroad to help raise some capital. Um, but as you raise those capital with them, um, you should have the mindset of a bank. Because if you don't have the mindset of the bank, uh, there's great chances that um, you don't, like you might not get back your money. Um, I think it's more of a cultural thing. I think it's a cultural thing, Jacob. Yeah, I do agree. I think it's very, it's very cultural. And I think, I mean, um, I mean, you have said it quite right. And I think, uh, I mean, we're both from West Africa. I'm just curious what Dan kind of has to say, but I think culturally um, there is, I think I personally have found it difficult to interact with my relatives than someone that I know, but I don't know on a very personal level. Um, so I, I, you know, I worked, yeah, I, I worked with some relatives that was really tough. Um, that if I go into this, it might be like a therapy session. <laughs> but but, uh, <laughs> but uh, I think there's a lot of, uh, I, 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 I exactly agree with you. If there's some, there has to be some formalities that you have to really make them believe that this is a business, it's not, it's not just um, it's not just a side project that they can just use the capital for personal for personal uh, for personal reasons, which some it often come up uh, comes up. In fact, it's always one of the issues that you have to address. And I don't know where the problems are coming from, but they're always around the corner. So um, I mean, just being cautious on how. I mean, I think you said it right. Um, just having that formality, having someone that. Maybe you know well. I mean, you have to know well when you're starting. And I mean, some I think there's someone like Desmond has a very good. Um, just he, he's just like he can provide you what you want, and he has that mindset, which is I think it's kind of fortunate that we have someone like that. But I think in general, it's like having that formality is helpful.